I'd like to share with you a little bit about my first big idea. When I was in grade school, I had this idea that for Valentine's Day, I would be the Valentine. <laughs> so my mom helped me make this big heart costume out of a cardboard box, and we loaded it in the car, and the next morning when we were driving to school, I was so excited for all of my friends to see my amazing Valentine's Day costume. And we pulled up to the playground, and I looked out and I saw all my friends and classmates, and I couldn't do it. There was no way I was getting out of the car in this. <laughs> and I remember this story now 23 years later, because of the look on my mom's face when she realized that I had given up on my big idea. Well, mom, better late than never. <laughs> now, there's a reason that I'm not here to talk with you today about my exciting line of Valentine's Day costumes, all right? Let's flash forward 23 years, and I'd like to share with you now a little bit about my last big idea. About a year ago, I was walking around Portland on my lunch break, um, eating and thinking and trying to get a little sun, and I noticed that from 12 to 1, the city fills up with this army of nine to fivers doing basically what I was doing. And I thought, wouldn't it be incredible if we could do something productive with that hour? You know, what an impact we could make. At the same time, I noticed the opposing army of folks that didn't eat. And the more you're out there from noon to one, the more you realize who eats and who doesn't, all right? Who can and who can't and you start to see what a privilege a meal actually is. So I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to address in some way hunger for the most vulnerable members of our community. Now, the Oregon Food Bank every month provides 92,000 emergency food boxes for children in Oregon. 92,000. All right, that's three times the size of a basketball stadium. Just children, just monthly, just in Oregon. Now that's a scary number, but it also shows the wonderful solutions that the food bank is able to offer to children and families in our backyard. And they even educated me to the fact that my $10 a day for lunch could be turned into 30 meals for children. And that's where this idea came from. I am skipping lunch so that 30 children won't. Will you join me? And since we're here to talk about ideas, I wanted to share with you three things to consider as you build an idea. Number one, put yourself into your idea. If you're asking something of somebody, it's much more effective if they see that you're willing to give the same thing. I'm skipping lunch, will you join me? Number two, ideas take time and money, all of them to varying degrees. So as best you can, try to start with time and money that you already have, all right? Here we're using your lunch hour and your lunch money, okay? What resources do you already have at your disposal that could help you to build your idea. Number three, play to the balcony. If the back of the auditorium can see and understand your idea, then you know someone walking by in the park will too, or clicking through online, all right? Make a statement, make it clear, make it bold, you know, make it loud, and then stick it somewhere in your idea in the logo, or the title, or your byline, or do what I did, run to Kinko's, make a giant sign, and nobody's gonna miss it. <laughs> now, 
even with all those elements in place, it was still just as much this idea as this one that got me out into the park that day. Because I already knew what it was like to give up on something because of fear, right? And the truth is, I've had a lot of these ideas, but I've only had one of these. How would the last 23 years of my life have been different if I had made it out onto that playground? And the next one, and the next one. But I did eventually make it out into the park, and I can tell you definitively that it changed the direction of my life. So maybe you have a little idea sitting at home, gathering dust. I can tell you, you do not have to fear bringing it out and showing it to people. Because the alternative is much worse. Now, I didn't know any of this when I set out that first day with my little box under my arm and my sign to go sit in the middle of Director Park. What I hadn't realized was I was actually benefiting from a very real magic that was with me that first day and has been every day since. And I've brought it for you here today, but I have to warn you, it's strong. <laughs> All right? You can sprinkle this magic on any idea, and not only will it make you fearless, it'll make your idea take off. And I'll even tell you it's secret, okay? This magic is made out of people. <laughs> it's community. If your idea benefits your community in some way, if your idea benefits your community in some way, something truly magical happens. Even if you're sitting alone in a park, you realize you're not there alone. Your community steps up. They rush to support you. They push you forward. And before you know it, your community changes. It grows. Your community takes on other communities. Your idea becomes a community. Your idea joins other ideas. And together, all these little simple ideas really can help shape the world. Oregon Food Bank serves about 900,000 people, and about a third of them are children. Anton's Our Lunch is really a one guy's campaign to end child hunger. He has raised enough money to allow us to get about 40,000 meals, and that's just really, really huge. I am skipping my lunch so that 30 children won't. Will you join me? The answer needs to be yes or no. It's a, it's a haiku, so it's missing one syllable, and that syllable is your answer, so you have to answer. People want to contribute in many different ways in Chicago, Dallas, Brazil, Amsterdam, either donate their lunch money or actually bring this to their city. I get inspired by the people that come up to me. I get inspired by the running total of what we've done. I haven't had a bad day yet. <clears throat> so do me a favor. Skip your lunch one day, all right? Invest that five or ten dollars in something that you believe in and take that hour and just sit. No phone, no work. Sit, smile, and you know, think. Think of your idea. 
what could you do with an hour? I invite you to come to the table with your idea and I'll keep sitting at mine. Thank you.